Hello, everybody. I'm Oliver Perkovich. I'm the founder and executive director of Skaterscan, which is an award-winning NGO that empowers children through skateboarding and education. And uh, I'm originally from Australia, from Melbourne, and I, I spent around seven years in Afghanistan uh, establishing the, the NGO Skaterstan. We're now 11 years later and uh, we're, we're, in the, we're in an office in Berlin, which I can give you a little bit of a, a tour, tour around. So firstly, this is Tracy, very important, my friend, the pit dinosaur. It is a dinosaur, I think. And uh, the, the home office day is working very well, so there's not that many people around. Uh, there's Neelix, the office dog, <laughs> and uh, some more. We got some some beautiful uh, Afghan woman on the wall, and uh, our. Uh, <laughs> you guys are important as well. <laughs> so, um, this is our uh, kitchen, and. Uh, so hello to David Bowie as well as Felix. <laughs> Do you know any dance moves? Uh, not any Bowie specific ones. Okay. <laughs> and Jess, Hi. who's the very uh, clever person that set this all up. Without Jess, this would not be happening. <laughs> and uh, here's a conference call. Oh, with Talia in Canada. So now that you've seen, you've seen a little bit of the skater stand office where we are and uh, a little bit who we are so today we're talking about you know, what skater stands approach to to education is and why how we got there um, my background is actually as from a, a, a scientific background. I got a degree in chemistry. And, uh, but Skater Stan has this big focus on creative education. And I always saw that as an important part of rounding out any, uh, any, any person and important in their, uh, important in their education. So Skate Stand started on the streets of Kabul. I went to Afghanistan in 2007 uh, with a skateboard in my hand. Uh, my girlfriend at the time got a job in Kabul as a researcher and I took my skateboard out into the streets. I tried to yeah, find out a little bit more about what made the Afghan people tick and both boys and girls were very, very uh, interested in in what we were in, in in the skateboard, and I saw it as a great way to interact um, together with Afghan children. I heard that half of the population in Afghanistan was under the age of fifteen, huge demographic, and it was especially interesting that girls were also trying out, um, wanted to try out the skateboard and it was something so new, it was a loophole. And I was able to, because there were no societal rules about girls not being able to skateboard, there were rules that said that they couldn't ride a bicycle or couldn't, women couldn't drive cars, um, but there were no, because skateboarding was so new, there was, it gave it an element of, something that uh, something that uh, girls could also try out and i established these little skateboarding sessions in in a in a fountain that was built by the russians when they were in afghanistan and in this empty fountain these uh, children would would come for skateboard sessions i gave the girls more time to skateboard than the boys uh, they got better than the boys at at doing it and as i from, from these little skateboard sessions, I got to know the children better. And they all told me that they had big hopes for their country. They wanted to see their country grow and prosper. And 
the more that I looked into their education system, I saw that it was based on rote learning. And I kept on hearing these stories about um, uh, companies in the area investing large amounts of money and it not really working. I think IBM spent very, very large amounts of money in, in India and tried to develop this uh, research and uh, a research lab um, to do invest a lot in R&D and it didn't really work because creativity seemed to be lacking from the educational aspect. People made very good engineers and the, the there was that scientific part of it that was that, that could be grasped quite well but the creativity part was a lot of the times missing and it made me think about economies like California that are so dependent on uh, new innovations and celebrating uh, innovations and creativity being at the core of creating a lot of value for those um, uh, for, for those societies um, and what was then the change that could happen in Afghanistan how could these children that wanted so much to change their change their country what were the things that they needed to to do it what were the skills that that they needed? and i really thought well okay they need to be able to they need to be able to solve problems themselves it shouldn't be a foreign consultant uh, coming and telling them what to do they should be defining the problem themselves and then solving it. But to be able to do that, you need a very solid type of education to, uh, to, to have the ability to, to, do, to do that. And so these first children that I got to back, back into the regular school system from uh, the, the, the skateboarding children that I got back to school and they were going into these rote learning classes that wasn't really going to cut it. And that, that's what made me think bigger. That's what made me think, okay, well, maybe if there's a larger facility, there is the ability to somehow provide something that doesn't exist here. And that was the, the creative arts piece. That was the creativity-based education um, that was going to then make, it, make a difference. And we were pushed very, very hard by um, the parents of the children, by the children themselves. They were saying, we want to learn English. We want to learn computers. And I was like, you, yes, you need to do that, but other people are able to provide those things. We can perhaps do something that is then complementary and not just repeating what everybody else does. Um, there's, a, there's, a big diff there's a big reason that... Uh, Leonardo da Vinci changed so much in the world because he was a polymath. He was, you know, he, he painted the, the Mona Lisa and he also invented helicopters. Um, there is something that is you, some, a broader, uh, a broader skill set is, is definitely what is needed when there's huge, huge problems to, to solve in, in Afghanistan. So we established the, the school in Kabul. It was widely uh, successful. Um, that was opened in 2000 and 2009. Um, we opened up, uh, uh, followed that up with a school in northern Afghanistan, in Mazar Sharif, that was um, then uh, around a thousand, a thousand children weekly. Half of those were, were girls. And what we taught was based around this program that we called Skate and Create. So it was one hour of skateboarding and one hour of creative arts types activities in the, in the classroom or outside. Um, it was, it was the, combination, the combination of those two things. So what we, uh, an example, example of that is we, we just did a, a curriculum a, a, a about the solar system recently and at first the children took the old 
safety equipment, the knee pads from, from skateboarding, and they turned them into planets. And then they actually learnt some scientific knowledge about how the planets work. They uh, found out about the, the first Afghan astronaut who was a, a cosmonaut that went to the Mir space station in 1988. And it, there was something that made them proud. It was something that made them think about their think about their future. There is an ability to teach both science and arts at the same time. And when science is taught in that way, it becomes something that is much more transferable and much more much more much more interactive and uh, it's something it, it's something that works uh, works works really well we want to have a responsive curriculum it is so so an example of that was we did a uh, uh, a thing on photography where we got a whole lot of cameras and the kids could go out and take photos around kabul and after that, they took the photos and then they laminated the photos and over the top, they drew with uh, felt pens what they would like the ideal Kabul to look like. So first it was photography, then they were learning drawing. Some of them hadn't really done much like that before. And then it was, it was so exciting to see what those drawings were of. They had drawn, you know, new skyscrapers and they'd, uh, drawn lots of trees and more animals and they started to think about what they wanted to, to have into their into their future and that's something that that prompted then a well you know we we took photos of the river and the river is dirty and so then the next thing was they went out and collected rubbish and uh after they collected the rubbish of course that wasn't the end of it it was a it was a matter of then Turning those rubbish, turning that rubbish into sculptures, and the the sculptures then were shown together with the ideal Kabul drawings in an exhibition that was open to the open to the public at Skaterstan, and so this responsive curriculum was something that it 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 made sense to the children. It was it was doing the things that they saw as important at that point in at that point in time. Though it was also student led, but it was able to then, yeah, a combination of what the, what the students thought was important, what the teachers um, had the ability to, to, to get across to them and crossing a, a multidisciplinary and uh, crossing a lot, uh, a lot of different, um, across a lot of different, different subjects and the, that that is a that is an important uh, important aspect into the future the change is going to happen faster and faster and faster and where in the past it, maybe even 50 years would go go past without a large curriculum change into the future if if the curriculum can't change from one month to another schools are not going to be relevant to the to the kids that are sitting in them and that's why a, a responsive curriculum is is vitally important and uh, something that something where the children also have a large amount of ownership over what is actually going on in their classes because sometimes they're more at the cutting edge than uh, than anybody than anybody else and then i guess uh, finally just on i mean why do we have skateboarding as part of uh, what we're doing well, it was, it's, it's a very fun activity. Um, it's, it's something that has taught me a lot of things over, over time. I'm, I'm now, uh, have been skateboarding for about 39, nine years, and that's a lot of falling off. And every time you fall off, you get back up again. And that's what I really see as a key life skill and to, to establish an organization like Skaterstan in Afghanistan took a lot of determination and a lot of getting back up again after being uh, after falling down and uh, yeah skateboarding definitely helps that another nice aspect about skateboarding is that there's no right or wrong way to to skateboard you can do it in any way 
that you want. There are no rules whatsoever and creativity is celebrated. And this is, a, this is a, an important aspect for, for everybody, I believe, that they have the ability to express themselves through a certain, uh, through, through a certain, through a certain medium and, and skateboarding is really good for that. So the, and, and it's, it's, it's something that where the, it's done on a very individual basis as well where you're really just fighting against yourself and if you want to throw yourself down 10, 10 stairs you've got to really convince yourself that that's a, that's a good thing to do and there's a lot of mind over matter in 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 being able to being able to do that and we've seen in great increases in confidence in resilience in creativity in determination in the students that are that are part of the the education that we that we provide so i guess to end it up i'd, I'd really encourage you to um go to our youtube channel which is just youtube.com slash skaterstan or any of our uh, social media outlets which is just at skaterstan s-k-a-t-e-i-s-t-a-n and you can see what's happening in the classroom who are the students what's going on at skaterstan and um if you uh, if you like what you heard in the, in the video please consider donating to skaterstan and uh, supporting further what we're what we're doing it's been a great pleasure to share with you all and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye from Skaterstan.